also wanted to make this one for a longer time, but he needed, so I was like, alright, let's, let's actually get to it. And because it turned out it was actually uh, not nearly as complex or extensive as I thought it would have to be. Um, so yeah, let now, without the way, um, so yeah, check my own out, his channel's in the description. Uh, he's, I think he's trying to figure some stuff out concerning, considering, uh, concerning, uh, tree generation, uh, using population, basically. He's trying to push stuff in, in, large, in unpopulated chunks and then populate them, like, basically generate trees like you can generate spawners, which is a bit complex. Um, but the reason he needed this filter, as a result, is because, well, it's kind of annoying to work with unpopulated chunks, because as soon as you get too close, they get populated. Um, so, to fix that, uh, we have a filter right here, and I should probably get on, because we're already one minute in. And uh, it's chunk properties either one below. So even if we have just selected the surface, you don't have the height actually doesn't matter at all. It only checks the x and z coordinates of the two corners. So um, all of the chunks in this selection will be affected. And uh, here we have the editor. Now we have five variables we can edit. Uh, there are more variables, of course, stored in each chunk, like entities, the entities, um, sections which store the block and block data and some other information and tile ticks and, and there's some of stuff which chunks also stored but these five seem to be the only ones you can easily edit with a couple of variables and uh, yeah that's why I kept them here although I have to say terrain populated uh, oh no wait uh, light populated and v are tags which I do not really which the wiki doesn't have any info on last update is also not too clear to me but I'll get to them one by one so uh, first of all this is the main, the default setting. If you leave all of these, these are like integer tags, if you leave them to minus one, then it, they won't actually get set. They will stay the way they are, so you don't actually edit the chunks. Um, then if you keep don't change over here, of course, it also doesn't change anything either. Only if you go to like zero or one, it will start actually setting that to every chunk in the selection. Uh, so that's how you can leave stuff unaffected while still going, for example. Uh, if you want to unpopulate an area, uh, which will work like this. And as you can see right now, MCEdit has marked all these chunks as unpopulated. In case you didn't know, MCEdit has this pink outline for all unpopulated chunks. But it uh, looks a bit weird, so let's... Actually, I'm going to do a bit something a bit more interesting. So we're going to go one inside of that, and we're going to set it up to true again. Filter. And uh, yeah, as you can see, we have now we have this outline of unpopulated chunks. Right here. Uh, so yeah, that's cool. Now, um, the other, as far as the other options go, uh, lap blades. I don't know what the, it means. The wiki doesn't know either. Same thing for V. It's maybe a version tag or something. And by default, it's one. But I just leave it unchanged because I don't want to mess with it. Uh, inhabited time is another one which I do know, which uh, basically means the amount of ticks uh, players have been inside of this chunk. If there are two players, you have to bear in mind that it increases twice as quickly because there are two players inside of the chunk, each player adds to this count individually. And this this time is stored and later on used to calculate local difficulty. Because as you may know, the longer you stay in chunks, m like you get more mobs with armor and potion effects and that kind of stuff which spawn in there. It's, I don't know what Mojang tried to do with that, maybe promote some kind of more nomadic lifestyle, but it, it means that around your base and stuff, you do notice that stuff starts getting more dangerous over time. However, it doesn't actually do anything ab above 50 hours, which is, uh, let me quickly calculate. I think that should be 18, uh, 180,000 seconds. Oh, wait, I must have, no, I must, I must have messed something up. Mm. Actually, no, it isn't, uh, it, it has to be that. And uh, then the times 20, then you get well, actually, it is just 20 times that, so... Okay, I should have went times that anyway. Um, so then you have 3.6 million ticks, and if you go beyond that, then, uh, well, the game is not going to do anything different anymore. But that's just the meaning of that tag. It has nothing to do with the filter or anything. So yeah, anyway, I just showed you the filter. I can show you some more with it, I guess. Well, this won't do anything normally, yeah. Now if I do fall, so, I'm sorry, true, then we move that. So, yeah. Anyway, I think that should be it. It's already five minutes in, so uh, yeah. Uh, again, down to the full description in case you guys are interested. 
I personally may use one as well for if I want to get into some spawn generation research because it's just quite useful to just be able to unpopulate areas you want. Uh, but yeah, with out of the way, thanks Matt to Marin for the motivation and suggestion. And thanks to you guys for watching. Uh, I hope you liked it. Even if you didn't, please leave a rating. And I hope I will see you in another video.